my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. So today is Block Wednesday. But before we do Block Wednesday, I wanna do a couple other things. It is the fried clam day. Celebrating fried clams. I think fried clams are my absolute favorite thing. <laughs> they like what? Like, like eating like rubber bands, right? <laughs> Breaded and fried rubber bands. I don't know why. Excellent fly, fried clams are the best, like from a clam shack where they are getting the clams coming in. I think New England was one of the places I had the very best clams. Uh, and I know there's two kinds of clams. One, like they're more meaty, like, and they're not really like my favorite because they're a little bit too strong of flavor. And we had, we had those in New York in the train station, which in a very classic restaurant there, it's been there a long time and they were tasty, but they were a little stronger. I forget the difference of the names. I should have looked it up before I started talking, <laughs> but I didn't. You'll tell me, I'm sure in the comments. Uh, so fried clam day, leave me a comment telling me if you enjoy fr fried clams, if you've had them at a fantastic place give that place a shout out if you want to talk about it at Facebook in my YouTube group the fireside chat the link is to that is also in the description box okay 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 so I had this um, kind of silly idea <laughs> well interesting idea 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 about my design wall on the morning chat and we have when the video first releases here at YouTube it is called a premiere and we are have a live chat feature that starts well it's there all the time until the movie act, until the video actually runs but uh usually people get on about a quarter of seven eastern time and it ends like five minutes after the video finishes then you, know, you can chat for about five more minutes till the videos then the video is closed and the chat's not open anymore. While you're watching, you can pop that open and read the chat. I'm sure it's not really that exciting while you're watching, but <laughs> because we go on tangents, we don't always talk about what the video is. So I'm sure a lot of people have to watch the video again because we're chatting. Uh, there's usually about 800 to 900 people who watch during the premiere. They do not, you all do not all talk, but <laughs> <laughs> or, or right in the chat but we have a lot of fun and in the chat a few days back someone mentioned how they like to work on the design wall they kind of like to work one project at a time because that's what fits on the design wall they can see it but that's kind of like their mode of operation they just sort of work on one project at a time and putting it one project on the design wall at once and I started thinking what if I put on my design wall all the projects I'm currently working on just a piece of them up there somehow so that I could visually see all of the current projects, you know, things that I'm doing this month, whether it is a, just a monthly, I have three, three that are monthly. Uh, so just once a month, uh, they get them out. And then there are weekly ones. There are a few that are kind of like the sideline projects that I'm doing while I'm sewing other things. So I've got it started behind me I am going to get the other camera and we're going to take a look because it's just made me giggle I'm just like oh this is so fun it does not feel cr well it, is, it looks a little crazy wait till you see but I don't find it overwhelming or or too much I've, I've always worked like this I've always worked on multiple projects um, even when I was a kid I always had multiple things going on you know it's just like when you're in school you always have multiple classes that you have to be doing at you know you don't just go to one class and be done for the day I mean that class eight like eight hours or something that's called a job <laughs> even on your job you probably had multiple tasks multiple projects and in my life all I have always had multiple projects whether it was finishing college going to my jobs where you always have multiple things you didn't just work on one project at a time that isn't how uh, computer people worked back then or while I did it and then when I got into quilting I had lots of things going on I was designing I was doing things for magazines doing things for books doing things for fabric lines traveling and teaching and doing all of these things all at the same time running podcasts, interviewing people. So I've always had multiple projects. So it is for me very um, invigorating to have multiple projects, but I know some of you really are one, per, one project at a time people. So this might have you hyperventilating, get out your paper bag and just be thankful it's not your design wall. <laughs> Let me get the other camera. 
So let's see what we have going on. <laughs> so one is the block Wednesday with my two rows sewn. Two, I started on the Halloween quilting it. Look at this. I might talk about this today, but I've got that much quilted. I've got it basted, all of that. Three, our Christmas one. The mystery that we just started, just started that yesterday. Four, this is all the stars. Well, there's one more. I haven't, I haven't um, ironed it yet. There's, I got five stars done. And I am seriously thinking on this one uh, to do one, two, three, three across and four down. That's one, two, three, four, five, five down maybe. That, I'm seriously thinking of going that small. What was that? Four, five. We've got the yellow, the yellow squares. And see, I've got, there you go. See, I've got that much done. And I'm just sewing them as I go now to get them there to that point. That was five. Okay, we've got six. These are the scrappy blocks from Shannon and Jason's book. And I just had to do another one. So I did the one below there. Oh, so fun. Okay, six. This is the test block. I have all the stuff to do the second test block and I just haven't gotten to it yet, but it is on my current list. I've got it on my current list. So that's six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's, that's seven. But what else do I have? I have got three, three block a month. So in here are the blocks for, um, gotta turn that off so I'm gonna make the camera crazy. In here are the charity quilt blocks for make a wish. So that means 10, seven plus three is 10. In here are the piece and quilt. So the piece and quilt blocks are in here. And then the 10th one is the uh, Christmas all year, which you can see I've made myself a note here, more block of the months in another container because I've worked ahead a bit and Bobby helped me on some of these. And so, okay, so I don't wanna lose track of where I've got some other stuff. So I had to make myself a note. All right, so that's 10. I'm not gonna put things from here up on the wall, although I'd really like to, like for this one, I could just stick, I could just stick this up here. And then there's just two that are not up on the wall in some format because they're actually, you know, they're, they're sewn together. So let's see, because I wanna take a picture somehow. Let's see, what if I just put them down? Put them down here. Okay, you know I did this with all of the blocks that were coming in when we when we were doing the critter quilts, you know, just to kind of get a feel for everything. All right, so that's 10 projects. And uh, yeah, I don't think I have any others that I'm actually sewing on. 10, 10 seems good, but you know, I have got the panel where from the Liberty Box. I've got this Liberty Box stuff and I found, I, th I was thinking, I found the flag again. This is this flag panel, which I think is so cute and the fabrics are so similar. Hold on. So there's the Sweet Land of Liberty panel and then if I use that for the backing, that would be kind of cool. I also found some of this that I had not used up from the Heart of America and I'm thinking I could stretch it out maybe to make a bigger quilt for a charity piece. But if I stand back now, so that, that one which isn't started, these are going to go together. I'm going to use that flag on the back there. So that means there are 11. I am backing up all the way to my window. I am at my window. Hold on, there. This is as far back as I can get. So you can get everything in there. So like if I shove stuff up, I could like tack stuff up there, but you know, it's not worth it. So there we go, 11 projects. I'll take a, a photo of that too and post it in quotes along with Pat Sloan at Facebook. Oh my goodness, look at that. So this makes me giddy, just so giddy. So there's 11 there, but I'm gonna add one more, which would be a revolving binding. So I have bindings to do in July and August, and I'm just gonna call that its own project, the binding project. So that's 12 projects. And when something here will finish, <laughs> so that we were finished and in August the vintage kites come in to replace it so I can keep it at 12. Not that I 
you know, can't go higher than that, but we don't really need to. Uh, some of these, like, I really am not going to be working on these, on those scrappy ones. So they're, you know, they're just going to kind of go away, but I might occasionally pull one out. I will definitely finish this one probably today, you know, might by tonight. So that'll be done. I need to start the Liberty Box. Need to start that ASAP. Uh, and then working, so I had to kind of make priorities. Like this one here will be more of a priority now. I have to do all those uh, stripes for the sides of all of them. And of course, the, the Christmas is ongoing. The three that are block a month are ongoing. But ah, so fun, just absolutely, absolutely fun. So I'm gonna challenge you. <laughs> do the same get out all of the projects you are currently working on take a piece of them or just take the container that has the block something like this and get them all together and take a picture and share it over at quilt along with Pat Sloan if you're not on there then just tell me here at YouTube like how many go count them how many are you currently working on actively working on where you're going to actually do something on them this month whether it's just once during the month like that's probably what those blue ones will be for me I mean once a month I might make some of those that might be how I handle that um, yeah do that okay let's talk about our uh, <laughs> our block Wednesday our block this week is from this book. This is what we're working on for the Block Wednesday. We're taking blocks from the different quilts that were laid out in a sampler by the Fat Quarter Shop. And it is the brioche quilt. And so this block is so nice. I just really love how that looks in repeat. This particular fabric line there looks like it had a lot of lights. Do you see that? Like some of the blocks, they sort of look different because the light fabrics blend into the background. So that's kind of a fun look. I am using my Paradise Park. So that is my newest fabric line from Benertex. And you can see all the, the first two rows up there. Let me pop a picture. So the two blocks that we're doing are on the third row on either side. So our worksheet looks like this, and this is what you download at the website. And remember that the very last download has the layout. So if somehow several people have emailed me asking where the layout is, you have to go download all the things that are on the project page, and then you'll find it. Remember, download everything. It's, it's all there. You don't need to wait for me. Um, so we're doing this one. And you're gonna make two of them like you see here. Here is my first one. Look how sweet that is. I love it. It's got kind of a crown. It looks like a crown, like four crowns around. I really love it. And then because we're using jelly rolls, you know, there's only so much of the jelly roll to go around. And so the other one is a different fabrics. Uh, it's got the same paisley, navy paisley here, but it has darker, the darker blues on the outside. And so if um, you wanted, you could definitely mix it up. If you wanted too darker and too light, you could have done it that way as well. So there are mine for row number three. And I will take a picture of them and put it up on my project page. Be sure you go and visit Kendall's channel for Block Wednesday. He is doing the blocks and he's sewing them every week. So for those of you who really enjoy seeing the block being sewn, check out Kendall's YouTube. Plus he does lots of other things and he's funny. <laughs> so you want to go watch him. Okay, okay. So we had, I had a little something come in the mail and this is from our friend Claudia in Georgia. Look peanuts I love peanuts oh so sweet so sweet Charlie Brown and Lucy and Linus and Snoopy what's the bird's name Woodstock right the bird's name is Woodstock <laughs> so she sent me a yummy Starbucks card look how pretty that one is thank you thank you Mwah. and I've I'm, I might be starting a collection of state fabrics now so she sent me Georgia two pieces of Georgia state fabric I know a lot of you have state fabrics from shop hops and stuff ah oh, so that's so pretty I love the colors and then one with Georgia 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 with a lot of uh, different things Savannah Cherokee Rose Fort Frederick the National Monument National Military Park. Yeah, all kinds of fun things on there. <gasps> That's awesome. So I'm gonna keep all these, I may need a bin now for state fabrics. 
That would be so fun, so fun to do something with state fabrics. I did mention that I started quilting on the, uh, on the spooky, on the ghosts. I started the ghosts and I'm doing the wave stitch. Whoops, oh, I had more pins in there, I forgot. So I started doing the wave stitch and here is the backing. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so there's the backing with that fun, fun, fun fabric. All right, so here's what the wave stitch is looking like. And that probably took me, just those wave stitch for this whole length, that number of them took me about, um, you know, 15 minutes or 20, 20 minutes, I think. So I was, I think that's how long it took. Cause I, well, maybe not. Yeah, no, probably about 15 minutes because I was thinking, oh, it's gonna take me about an hour to do this if I just sat and did it. So I'm pretty excited to have that ready to go. And let me show you sort of laying this out to baste it. I'm going to spray baste this and I decided rather than, it's wider than my board, my ironing board. So instead of putting it the length, uh, I was, I decided to put it the width here. And so I can start at the middle on the front and I'll spray baste and then press all the way down because I like to heat the spray base. I don't know if it tells you to do that, but that's what I like to do. And then I'll do the other side. You know, so I'll pull it this way. Then I will flip the whole thing and do the back side. So being a long skinny, it's uh, a little more awkward just because I want to be sure, you know, I'm not, I'm doing this myself, so I don't have a lot of, I'm not putting like a lot of extra. So like I've right now don't have it centered in that background because you know I am so frugal with my fabric I'm thinking well if I can get it over here then I have this wider strip that can be used for somebody can use it <laughs> why do I think like that why why do we do are you doing that you might be okay so there's the there's the strategy with finishing that up meant that I had a bin that's empty maybe that bin will be for state fabric but i have to empty it so if you have a bin that you need to go through and empty out grab it and let's go <laughs> well i have to clear out the bin for the um, the spooky the sweet and spooky that's the halloween one we just finished in june halloween in june and i need to go through the bin and figure out what's in there and disperse it and clear the bin out so i can use it for something else because this is done and Sometimes I leave these things just a little bit longer than I should and then I don't have a bin to put new things in. So today, today, now for, I already grabbed this one out and so put it back here. So I've got, let's just take this first stack. Here I'd already grabbed that out and I thought, okay, I'm just going to film this and show you. This piece here, is a, it's a light. This is perfect for putting into my scraps with the uh, two and a half inch square. So I'm like, yeah, this is this can be cut in half. I'm not gonna do it on the fold. But what I'll do is just make all of this. Yeah, so I've got that stack. They're gonna be two and a half inch square. So I'm just going to put that over there. And then what do I have here? I have some small pieces that I could cut up to two and a half inch squares if I feel like I need more orange. I have some like the spider web. Oh, I mentioned spider webs, but these were just layer cake squares, so I couldn't use that for backing. But that would have been so cute for the back of the um, the ghosts. So these I'll put in that bin that I showed you with Halloween. So I'll make a Halloween stack over there that can go in the bin. This is basics. Basics. Basics in black. The purples. Uh, and the gray that was the background so okay so basically i'll pull out of here things like here i will put that i'm gonna this came from the gray so i'm gonna put it back in the gray bin then i have a bunch of the layer cake pieces i've got recycling the trash more gray because i just pulled all of that gray when i pulled it Ah, so I need to make the binding. I'm gonna do the binding in the stripe. So I have to keep this aside to make the binding over here. So I'll just put that there. I have some green fabrics, so they can go there. Some more white fabrics that can just be put back and another purple. And this is some um, 
of the little leftovers and things, I may put this all into the scrap bag. And then the gorgeous floral that I think I'm just going to add to my collection. Okay, so that pretty much empties this bin. And then I'll put all this away, cut up a few of these things that I showed you. And then what I'll do is on here, all I do is just a regular cleaner. And that takes off the chalk pen. They call it a chalk pen, so it looks like chalkboard. But this just comes off easily with just the regular cleaner you have in your, your kitchen. And I'll get that off. And then this bin is ready for another project. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. It's like sometimes it feels like it's going to be like a big deal, but that wasn't a big deal. That's pretty good. So the little the little side topic uh, in, I think, I don't know, a couple different places, whether they were in comments, uh, in the chat, over in my Facebook group, people talked about fading fabric. And I think we talked, you know, they've asked me, does my fabric fade because it's hanging out in the sh in shelves that's not behind doors it's like i don't have the luxury of doors there's just there's just no doors here so that's not going to happen so they're going to be open um i do have some things in bins but it's not for any particular reason just so that they're less cluttered looking uh, but things will uh, will fade with light even if you know fabrics will fade with light even if they're not getting direct sunlight and i want to show you this example because you never know what fabric is going to fade. There is just no way of knowing. To me, I don't worry about it. I enjoy the quilts, use them, move on, make another one if that fades. Uh, but I understand that some of you don't make very many quilts. But if you're gonna make a quilt and you're gonna hide it away in a box under the bed in the other room, why bother making it if you don't want to enjoy it make just make tops then and just store your tops they store smaller and you don't have to do the work of quilting them <laughs> that's hey okay but i'm going to show you something these are pillow shams that have been on my bed quite a long time i have to get them in the right way and when i put the barn star on my bed which oh you want to see that i'll show you the barn star on my bed there it is uh, these pillow shams don't match it at all, so I just have the gray pillowcases. So let me show you these pillow shams. These are ones that I have had for a long time. I made them with some Amy Butler fabric here, and then this I think was some, I don't know, Free Spirit or somebody's fabric. And I have loved them to death. They have been on the bed. The bed does not get direct light into those windows but it does get light so let me show you the back side of the pillowcase against the front side so here's how it's faded but this has not faded one iota not one bit that is stripe is still as vibrant here on the back on, on the front side as it is on the back so this is the front with the faded blue and this is the back and it is super vibrant. So there is absolutely no way you can guess what fabrics of yours will fade uh, just from regular light versus not. Hanging it in a window where direct light is coming in is, and hitting it will almost 100% guarantee it to fade. But light in your room, some things will fade and get a nice patina to them. Like, I don't mind that this is kind of faded. This doesn't bother me. It still is very pretty to me. Kind of feels like, you know, faded sheets now. <laughs> but uh, it's still nice. So anyways, that is my thoughts. Just use your fabric, enjoy it, and make more. Make more, make more, make more. There's always more to make. And uh, just, ha just have fun. Okay, our brioche, which is a yummy bread, uh, our brioche blocks. So here are my two for Block Wednesday for our Jelly Roll Sampler. There we go. All right, my friend, it is the 4th of July tomorrow here in the United States. Well, it's 4th of July everywhere, isn't it? But <laughs> it is our Independence Day. Being an American, if you say 4th of July, you just know that means Independence Day. So Independence Day, uh, it is tomorrow. So it's a holiday and there will be no video. So I will see you uh, on Monday. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.